Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless. And as I've said in many of my tutorials, I, I enjoy playing around and trying to think out of the box. For example, most people use the stamp tool to make corrections or to cover things up. And I think I'm going to do a couple of videos on the stamp tool. And the first one is going to be how to creatively use the stamp tool to create a painterly like look. So let's get started. So I just pulled in uh, this photo from, I believe it was Unsplash, but you can use any photo because trust me, by the time I'm done with this, it is not going to be a beautiful art piece because I work straight through when I'm doing most of the recordings and I don't take a lot of time, but you should spend a lot of time perfecting this. So I pulled in a stock photo and it was by M-I-H-A-I Mahai L-A-Z-A-R, but use any photo that you want. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer, a blank pixel layer, and I am going to fill that layer with a color that's part of some of some of this inside of here. So I'm just going to go to the paint bucket, which is the flood fill tool, and I'm going to double click here and choose a color that's maybe one of these fairly light colors in here in a tan and at least get close to it anyway. I'm going to pick maybe that one and I think that's a little too dark so I'm just going to pull it down here. I'm looking at this up here now and, and when I feel like I got a light enough color in that range I'll just say close and I'll fill. So now I've filled a whole page and I'm going to bring that to the back. Now I'm going to take another layer. In fact, I'm going to lock this for now. And now I'm going to take another layer above this photo. And it's a blank pixel layer. And what I'll do now is I'm going to get the clone stamp. And I'm going to choose a different type of brush. So let's say a texture brush. And you could pick any texture you like, but let's see what I would like to try. I'm going to try this one here. It's called Grunge Pattern 4, which came with Affinity. So I have to say current layer and below. So it knows to pick up from below. So I'm going to do option, click, and then immediately, without moving my mouse, I want to start painting in the same spot. So wait, basically I'm following this tree. And I know you can't tell but I'm following this tree and I'm painting. Now I should be doing this with a tablet. Uh, it's the best way to use these brushes because then you can kind of um, do pressure sensitive things and it'll feel like a real paintbrush. But I am not using a tablet right now. So I'm basically just grabbing a little bit of these, the dark shadows of the tree and seeing how much I can get. And I can't really tell exactly what I'm doing but I will in a moment. So let's just keep going here. And I'm just painting right on top of these trees. And I'm sure I didn't get them all, but we can fix that later. And I'm not even going to do this tree. I'm going to leave that at that, but I will do these shadows. I'm going to try and get as much of the shadow in. And then you can tell by doing this, and you can see what's going on. Now I see that it's feeling a little softer than I wanted it to be. So maybe I should have picked another brush. So um, let's try this one, grunge pattern. I think it was grunge pattern three I picked. Yeah, we'll try grunge, grunge pattern two this time. I'm not sure what I did. And I'm just going to go right over it again, still continue. And maybe I should be more on hardness. Let's try a hardness level of 100% this time and see how that affects this part. And let's take that off. And that's what we got so far. Okay, so that's that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take that and do effects. And I'm going to give it an outer shadow. And I'm also, I'll just leave it with a little bit of an offset and less opacity and then I'm going to do bevel and emboss and you start seeing the texture coming out I'm going to try outer emboss first 
And then I'm even going to do a 3D. And we'll see some texture there. Showing up, I believe. And we can soften it or do different things later, but this is just for now. And so now we have some texture there. And so we're going to call this trees. Now I'm going to put a new, I'm going to move that tree because I don't want it to affect my stamp tool anymore. So I'm going to move that tree now out of my way completely. And then right above here, I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to take that layer. In fact, I'll call this foreground. And I'll take that layer. And once again, I will go to the stamp tool. And it says current layer and below. So it will pick up what's underneath here. And I'm going to pick another, I don't know, maybe, I don't even know what these are. How about brush pattern 03? And it's all trial and error. You have to try different things out. And all I'm going to do now is basically, it says hardness zero. I'm going to try and really raise the hardness here and see what we end up with. So to test that, you can just look like that and see what we're doing, like this. So I'm kind of brushing all of this in. And it doesn't matter that you're brushing on top of the trees because that we, we will put the trees on top of that later. So let's see how that is. I'm going to go even more. And maybe I'll even pick another brush. I'm going to try brush pattern three and mixing that right in. So I'm basically rubbing it and playing around with it and seeing what I end up with. So let's see what we got. And that's not bad. Okay, so we can live with that one. I'm going to move the trees in front of the foreground. So now we have the trees and we have, and I'll get you a close up so you can see the texture that's going on. And you can change how much texture um, by the effects. And we went to foreground. Remember we painted the foreground, oops, but we didn't give it texture yet. So let's give it texture. Uh, how about 3D? And we can give it a bevel and emboss. Now it's way too much. And, and maybe an inner bevel this time or an outer bevel. Let's see what that looks like or an emboss. And maybe we cut it back a little and we can soften it up a little. And if you want, we can always change the pattern. Just flip through these and see which ones you like. And I could also give it an outer shadow. And let's see how we could do a radius on the outer shadow. And I feel like the 3D is a little bit too much. So I'm going to cut back on that and the opacity. And maybe even the bevel and boss. Okay, so I'm going to close. So now if we look at it, this is what we got. It's not beautiful. It's not any, nothing near beautiful. So now I'm going to go right to the photo and I'm going to say layer, new fill layer. And it gave it the same color, but now I'm going to change that from that, from regular to gradient. And so if it's gradient, I'll just go like this. And that looks good. So with the gradient fill layer selected, I'm going to go up here and I think the top one, I want that to be kind of a light blue maybe. Think about it as sky, some kind of a sky color. And maybe something like that. Again, it's not gonna be a beautiful photo here. <laughs> and then on the bottom one, I think I want it more brown than orange. So I'm gonna darken it a little bit like this. Okay, and I think that looks okay. And then of course on that fill layer, I'm gonna add a pixel layer above it. And on that, I'm going to pick some kind of a texture. Maybe instead of a texture, let's go to sprays and splatters. I don't know. Here, how about something like this? That's interesting. And make sure I select the clone brush. So I clicked sprays and splatters and I used 200. I'm gonna option click. We should make sure the brush is big enough. Let's make it big. I'm using my right bracket. And I'm going to do option and I'm going to click once to select it. And now I'm going to start painting sprays and splatters. 
And what it's doing is it's picking up the exact color from the gradient fill. So it's hard to see what it is. But what I can do now is let's turn the effects on, give it a bevel and emboss. You see the texture? We just add it and give it 3D. And again, you should play around with these and decide how much do you want? Do you want a little bit? Do you want a lot? Do you want it softer? Do you want it stronger, opacity down? And you could do all kinds of stuff here. So I'm just going to do this. Like I'm going to get you more of a close up. And you can see the texture that's forming. And let's create a circle, an ellipse, because the light is coming in from this side right here. And I don't really want that ellipse to be perfectly white, maybe in the more in the yellowish, really pale yellow, maybe like that, a warm yellow like that would be good. And now with that ellipse selected, we can go to Gaussian blur. And let's see how much we can blur that out. Just give it a little bit of blur like that. You can leave the ellipse as normal or you can go down the line and click uh, all the different blend modes. And I'm just clicking the down arrow to see if I like any of them. And that's average. I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to stick with, no, let's go back. Luminosity is pretty nice too. I'm going to go average. Let's, let's keep it as average. And then I'm going to now duplicate that. Let's pull out control or command J. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to stretch it way out like this and turn it. And I'm going to kind of do this kind of a thing and bring it out like this. Maybe a little bit more that way and out. So I'm kind of trying to get a feeling of where the light is going. I'm going to get closer. And of course, this is too strong. And instead of average on this, I might do an overlay. Okay, so here we are. So now we got a little bit more of a light feeling to it. It's a little, it's still too bright for me. Let's take them all and layer merge visible. So now we have one picture on top and maybe we go to curves on that one. And let's see, I think I want a little bit darker, gives it a little more interest. And we can lighten this up a little, but I kind of like the darkness of it. I kind of like the feeling of that. I think that's much better. I'm going to select this whole thing. Let's turn all the rest of this off. I'm going to rasterize this. And then I'm going to rasterize and trim. Okay, so now let's see if we can give a mat to it. I'm going to scroll out and I'm going to now and I'm going to now bring this out and bring this out. Bring them all out a little bit. I should be measuring, but I'm doing this very quickly. What I'll do now is make a new layer. First, I have to say apply. And now I'm going to fill this layer probably with this same cream color. Let's put this up in front. So now if we select these two and we go up here, we can go center and center. So we know that they're all centered. We command click on the icon here and hide that. And we go to this one and we, we do control, or actually cut, com command X or so control X leaves a hole. And I'm going to move that right above the painting and now take this and I'm going to do bevel and emboss. And I'll do it emboss and 3D maybe. And it looks like a frame. So there you go. And it's not a masterpiece. <laughs> it's, it's not even close to any masterpiece. It's pretty bad. I should have done more yellow here. And there's a lot of tweaks I can do right now. I could, uh, I don't know, gradient overlay. I could do so many things. But I can't keep these tutorials going on too long because people get bored after a while. But I just wanted to show you that you can create different things with the clone stamp. Sometimes you'll be doing a whole photo manipulation and then you'll look at it and say, hey, maybe I want to do something with that. You know, maybe I want to change it into a painterly look. So play around and hopefully I'll be doing another tutorial because I have another idea with the clone stamp. 
that uses it in a different way. So have a great day. Bye.